Are you adopting a Boston Terrier from a rescue? In this video, I speak with a volunteer who actually does the home visits prior to adoption. Now, nearly all Boston Terrier rescues throughout the United States do some sort of home visit. So if you wanna be prepared and understand why they do these home visits, this video is for you. And be sure to stay till the end because I'm gonna share with you how you can give back to this particular Boston Terrier rescue coming up. Everybody. Welcome to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Consider subscribing if you're someone who wants to learn more about the breed, learn what it's like to be an owner, hear expert interviews, as well as connect with other Boston Terrier lovers just like yourself. I'm Donnie Gardner, the founder of BostonTerriorSociety.com, and over there is Bella, my Boston, in her typical spot. And today, I actually bring on Linda. She's a volunteer with Boston Buddies. It's a Boston Terrier-specific rescue in Southern California. And what I wanted her to come on to talk about was the actual home visits that nearly all Boston Terrier rescues in America do. Before you can even start the application process, well, once you start it, then they're gonna do a home walkthrough. And I just want her to tell us like, why do they do these home walkthroughs? What are they looking for? And basically how you can prepare yourself for one of these visits. If you're someone who's thinking about adopting or is on the fence, I'm hoping this video will help you understand at least one portion of this overall process. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention, I did create timestamps. You can check them out in the show notes. If you have a specific question relating to having one of these safety visits, you can actually go to the question I ask in the timestamp and then it'll take you to the answer in the video. I hope this helps. So let's get into the interview. Thank you so much for coming on the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel today to talk about kind of your role in Boston Buddies. But before we get into that, could you just tell me a little bit about yourself and the two Bostons that you've rescued to date? I'm the mom to two of the most amazing little Bostons. I got, uh, got them when they were approximately five years old and I've had them nine years. So they are now super seniors but they are actually evolving into what I call geriatric seniors. They're finally slowing down and they're finally mm -hmm. e evolving into a true senior dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what, um, where Bella is right now. <laughs> I got involved with the rescue Boston Buddies of Southern California and it's probably the largest rescue out in, in California. I think it's the most predominant for Boston Terriers in Southern California. And the thing about Boston Buddies that impressed me the most and how I became a volunteer is it's 100% volunteer, no paid employees okay. at all. Mm -hmm. so, all so I helped to raise money. And then I, when I moved from my original home where they came and did a home visit, mm -hmm. I moved to the desert and were wanting to expand in this area but never could because they had no people to do the home visits. I stepped in and said, oh, I'll be happy to do that because I'm semi-retired. As far as like these home visits that you do and everything, because I had a lot of people asking questions about it, like why do they do the home visits? Kind of what's the purpose? Is it to, I know some people thought it's a way to like disqualify people, or is it more of just a tool for the rescue to basically educate the person who's going to be adopting one of these Boston Terriers? That's an excellent question, and it's two-sided. Absolutely not to disqualify people. The objective to a rescue is to find good homes. They're not going out to disqualify. They're going out to help make sure that your home is going to be a good fit for the Boston that they're going to let you rescue. But the objective of a home visit is, first of all, it is not an inspection. Mm -hmm. It is a site visit. If it's not safe, they help you to get it to a safe situation. Mm -hmm. And there's a multitude of things that we're looking for in this visit. Okay. What are some of those things that you um, the first thing that they want us to do as the person that's doing the site visit is right as you're coming into the neighborhood, how close is the residence to the street? Are they things that are going to disqualify them? No, they're things that we need to be aware of so that we can share this information. Okay, I see that you are right, your house sits right at the edge of the street. You have no front yard. What are you going to do 
to prevent your dog from running out into the street. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, versus, it's not about disqualifying them. It's about sharing information to help them better understand what their needs are going to be, what their, their responsibilities are going to be. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they haven't got a clue that, oh, wow, I never thought of that. As a mom of a Boston, or two Bostons for nine years, there's a whole lot of things I didn't think about. As far Excuse as like me? the main uh, safety issues, what are like maybe three kind of safety things that you see whenever you're walking through these homes? Thing and gates are huge. Mm -hmm. Swimming pools. Hmm. Okay. okay, when I was, when I first adopted, I had a swimming pool at my house. Mm -hmm. And here again, um, my uh, person, that came to my house was brand new and didn't know. So she told me I had to build a fence so that the dogs couldn't get into the swimming pool area. Mm -hmm. And I, because I wanted the dogs, I said, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. However, that isn't true. So these are things that we look at. And if I see a pool there, I ask my first question is going to be, what's the dog's access to this area? How can you ensure that this gate doesn't get left open if it's a gated area? Mm -hmm. Is it required to? No, of course not. And some Bostons love to swim. So fencing, pools, in, especially in California, we, mm -hmm. you know, every other house is a pool. Right. The other thing is chemicals. Okay. Access to the garage, because a lot of people have docky doors that go out into their garage. Okay, now you have two factors that are safety factors. In most garages, we store chemicals of some sort. Mm -hmm. Are they high enough that the dogs can't get into them? And what happens if somebody's coming in and has opened the big door and the dog is in the garage? Yeah. So look carefully if you're going to put your doggy door going into your garage mm -hmm. because it creates a whole nother set of issues that have to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in if at all possible make your doggy door direct to the area where they're going to go do their business or go play or okay. both. So I'd say the key things would be water, fencing, and chemicals and outside access because we don't think about it, but a gate that a large dog wouldn't bother, Bostons mm -hmm. can get underneath the gate really fast. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. They also can jump. I have yeah. in my- So oh. we, yeah, we had a, a baby gate to keep Bella from going downstairs. And I mean, the baby, I don't know how tall it was, but I mean, it was a normal size baby gate and she would jump that right going down the stairs luckily didn't break any of her legs but yeah she can jump, clear it no problem absolutely lacy i had a, a baby gate in my other home to block the hall off because it had all the bedrooms and at that time i had a roommate that really didn't want a dog in his room mm -hmm. and i didn't have any objection to that i felt you know he was great with the dogs but he just didn't want him up on his bed yeah. Okay, everybody has that right. Uh, so we put the doggy, the gate there because they still had in the rest of the house, a sunroom and a whole backyard area to play in. And so they have plenty of room. Mm -hmm. And But if I left them home too long, Lacey would just literally go over that gate to get into my bedroom. So fencing. And underneath, outside fencing, you want to look carefully at things that might cause a, an issue. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, definitely consider subscribing just so you can get the latest from Boston Terrier Society. Back to the interview. Another thing that the rescue encourages us to look at is what animals are on all sides of you. Okay. Your neighbor's animals. Mm-hmm. That's a huge factor because my neighbors behind me got a dog that was a nightmare. Uh -huh. It barked all the time. That's when my dog started to get out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are triggers. 
and things that happen. And so where my yard was perfectly safe, mm -hmm. technically, that's when she learned to jump the five foot fence. She had never done it in the previous four years, mm. but that, that dog, and so these are things that we encourage uh, the, the people that are wanting to rescue is go outside first and see what is your surroundings right. and really take note from an objective point of view. How long do these typically last? I know each rescue can be different, but from your well, experience. It depends, of course, on how many people are in the home. One of mm -hmm. the key factors is they want everybody there. They mm -hmm. want everyone there because they want to ask questions to all the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you want to, if they have other dogs, you want to see how they react with the other dogs. But the typical visit will last, um, depending on who's doing it, mm -hmm. how big the home is and how many people, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. So relatively I've done a short lot of people's time. lunch hours before, and if you know for a fact that they're on a time crunch, then you cover the key essentials because a lot of it you can mm -hmm. look at. You don't actually have to ask them those questions. You'll be able to see it. Mm -hmm. As far as these safety walkthroughs, where in the application process is this done? Like, is this done like, let's say I submit my application to Boston Buddies today. Does somebody come out, or is it whenever I'm about to, you know, receive or rescue a Boston Terrier? Oh no, you won't even get on the list to be eligible for a rescue in Boston Buddies mm -hmm. without having your uh, site approval. Okay, so, so this is like the very beginning. You file your application, mm -hmm. they arrange for a site visit. After the, the site visit is approved, if I get an, a request to do a visit, I call the same day that I get the request, set up the appointment as soon as possible with the people. Usually it's within three days. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is anybody that doesn't want a site visit for a couple of weeks is probably not all that serious. You know, if they're excited about getting a dog, I want them to have their dog as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And so I want to ensure that it's a safe place for us to give them a dog. Mm -hmm. Once we finish Boston Buddies has an amazing website. We do all of our reports online. I, okay. file, I, mm -hmm. I take a hard copy. Matter of fact, this is actually uh, the, it's a six page thing, but most of it's notes to me, not, mm -hmm. and it's a home visit report. And of course okay. they take, they ask for things like the types of homes and mm -hmm the streets, mm -hmm. the conditions of the house are important because it's not just the safety, but what if somebody has pristine white furniture? You get a Boston. Try and train them to stay off the furniture. You can right. do it. You mm -hmm. can. So there's things like that. But your home interior as well applies to safety because here again, mm -hmm. you have chemicals, cleaning supplies, Sometimes we don't think about anything about leaving a bottle of bleach sitting on the floor. Right. Even though it's mm -hmm. closed. Boston's will lick anything. <laughs> that is so true. Well, now, so, now that I have toddlers, yes, that's definitely true, especially if you have kids. If you look at getting a Boston as, get, as having two two-year-olds mm -hmm. or one two-year-old, you know, a toddler, then you're going to be fine. Because if you mm -hmm. wouldn't put it there for your kids, you don't want it there for your dog. Right. Yeah, exactly. So that's a really good th way to look at it. Well, Linda, as far as somebody wanting to maybe reach out to you, if they have any particular questions. My email is fine. You have a copy of my email. We yep, can I'll put it in the show notes for you. that in the show notes. And mm -hmm. I'm always happy to answer anything about a Boston, but if I don't know the answer, I probably know somebody that does, and I would be able to either refer them or get them the answer. Okay. BostonBuddies.org, they do more activity on their Facebook page than they do on their website. Okay. I mean, the website's there, and it gives you a great history on the organization and how to adopt and that type of thing, but mm -hmm. the Facebook, it 
shows all their fundraisers. It usually has all the pictures of who's up for adoption, who mm -hmm. just came in. Well, Linda, thank you so much for coming on and just sharing, you know, your expertise on doing these safety walkthroughs. And because I have had a lot of questions about it. And I think this is going to help a lot of people that are even on the fence of, do I even want to go through a rescue because of this, just because they see it as an extra step. But honestly, it's to educate, to help educate people through this process. That's exactly what it is, is it's there to help them. It's also to help them know that they made the right decision to go with a rescue. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Well, it's my pleasure and I'd be happy to help anyone that needs help. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you wanna contact Linda or Boston Buddies of Southern California, check out the show notes just so you can get their contact information or actually check out the Boston Terriers that are available on the Boston Buddies website. And I just wanna stress it again, the importance of these walkthroughs, they're not inspections. These are walkthroughs to help you just have a better understanding of what it's gonna be like when you get your Boston so you know all the safety you know, pitfalls, if you will, that you can help fix before your Boston Terrier arrives. Now, as far as giving back, I just wanna let you be aware of like Boston Buddies and nearly all Boston Terrier rescues throughout the United States do some sort of fundraisers. And Boston Buddies is a 501c3. You are giving to a nonprofit organization when you give, and they do a lot of charity events throughout the year. So go ahead and check out the show notes if you wanna check out those charity events. It'll be labeled so you can click on them and see what's available. And this can be your way of giving back to the Boston Terrier community. Now, if you wanna learn more about Boston Terriers, definitely check out this playlist I created. Basically, what Boston Terrier owners should know before getting a Boston or one of my latest videos here. And as always, until next time, life is better with a Boston.